Hello all. I am in my shop this time. Decided to move my control or my enclosures back to the shop since they are movable. That was the whole purpose of building them this way. Might as well put my money where my mouth is and put them on the machine. So they are actually sitting literally on the CNC machine. Give you a quick overview because they are majority done. Had a little bit of a hurdle with one of the circuits that I was trying to wire for the spindle cooling. I wasn't able to get that, so I had to reroute it. And I'll try to show you a quick overview of that here. And then uh, when I move all the boxes down to the bottom, we'll actually run, not run the machine, but we'll move the machine a little bit and show the functions. So I have done a video on this box here. This is the power enclosure. And then this one I have not. This is my um, drivers. So Let's start with the power enclosure here. We do have two fans on top. We have very primitive filtering system here to draw the air in, filter out some of the dust. And on the bottom, I kind of have it split in half here. I have power that's gonna flow through to my inverter and spindle. This is uh, power that's gonna go out to my drivers as well as my controller. And then this is power that's gonna go to these two fans for the cooling. And on the inside here. Yeah. Those are the fans there, which also happen to be, of course, the hottest things that get in here. Here are the power supplies. Um, 36 volt, 36 volt, 24 volt. The main power for the CNC comes in from the top here, goes into the circuit, then comes down into the power terminals here. Once again, we have the line, neutral, and ground. Then for my spindle, once the power does come in, it'll turn on this relay, which will allow the power, it'll come in from the spindle, which will go through this circuit and then flow out through the bottom of this box and then power my spindle. This relay, this one is actually what I had a little bit of problem with. I ran into a little stinker called milliamps. I have a signal that comes out that's 20 milliamps, but I don't know how to wire a milliamp relay the way it needs to, and I've tried lots of stuff, so, so that one beat me. So I went back to this and I'm gonna use the 24 volt power supply. Since I do have an open terminal to power it. And then once I turn that power on, power will come out through here, which will go into a outlet. I'm thinking an outlet so I can have two plugs. Um, it's eventually I want to have a water cooling system more like a computer and it will also need fans to cool the coolant or the water so i'll have a plug for the coolant and then a plug for the fans and i have a switch that turns on both all right coming over here let's just say let's get the outside got two fans more filter material power in for the drivers and then one that'll go through to my controller out for the fans. This side is pretty clean because I needed this to flip open to give me the most space and this one to flip open this way to not interfere with those and also make it accessible. And then here is where the connections for the fans and then of course the motors. And then this is the terminals at the top that are gonna go to my MPG and my controller. Offline controller. Open it up here. Power comes in, supplies both my Ys at the bottom. I'm gonna have an X and then a Z. I uh, put the filter material here so that it draws air in because it'll be sitting upwards. Uh, both these boxes will slide down and they'll actually sit on the back of the CNC down here. Not down there on the shelf, but actually like a wall mount on the back to give me the most space for storage and things underneath. Um, but like I was saying here, I put it here so that as it sits, it'll draw the cool air from the bottom. Because given it's 105 outside, up to 110, 12 some days, 
figure that's where the coolest air will be. It'll be able to draw it in and then push all the hot air from the top. Same concept kind of on this one. Okay, sorry, moving you around a little bit. Uh, as it comes back in, power goes up. Those are for my Ys since I need to split that signal into two drivers. Um, limit switches and everything will be on this. And then we have the leads that go out to the controller. Close this up. And the offline controller is right over here. So this is just my cardboard makeshift box, but I'm using this kind of as a prototype because this is already my third one. And I had to add this switch. I shouldn't say have to add, had to add. I added it because I was beaten by the little stinker called milliamps. So I added that switch, that'll be for my cooling. And then that's the USB port where I just put a USB stick. Once I have the file on there, basically turn on the machine, put it in there, load the file, hit run. Should just go do its thing. And then this is the MPG that I can use to maneuver the CNC as need be. All right, so that's just kind of a quick overview of the system here. Uh, what I'm going to do is now put this down on a lower shelf. So I kind of have an open area and we can move the machine around. Hopefully you can move the machine around. Nothing uh, breaks, splits, splinters, fractures, explodes. You know, all those good words that we like and see what happens. All right, I will get back with you folks in just a minute. We are back. All right, out of focus a little bit, but what we've done is we have moved our enclosures just to this bottom shelf, but this shelf will actually be a wall. It'll sit on the back here to give me as much space as I can for storage and things underneath. And what I've done is I've put a fan here on the corner. This is going to represent the spindle. The power will only be on once the system is on, but I just want to make sure it works. So we have a fan there. And I also hooked up a light here. This light will represent the cooling for the spindle. Alrighty. And this is the CNC. Take a step back here the best I can in my smaller shop. Give you folks an idea. Because now this should actually start to make a little bit more sense. Instead of just a bunch of wires, motors, and gibberish that I'm talking about that I'm learning. Here is the heart and the brains, which are the enclosures on the bottom for the CNC, which is this entire machine here. So let's turn it on, show you the movement I got. Oh, I guess first off, this is once again, my offline controller, MPG, manual pulse generator. And I'm gonna use this switch as my on off because I do not have that just yet. So we're gonna turn the system on. The fans for the actually actual cooling, I did unplug here just so that we can we can hear what's going on. I can hear this fan going now. And then this button is gonna be what I'm gonna use for the cooling because that little stinker milliamp stopped me from using this guy because I could not figure out how to wire it so I could just send the signal from here. So I just went around it. So we have the plate back there, cooling off, cooling on, cooling off, cooling on. All right, and from here we have the controls where we can move this. So let's go ahead and do that. I see we're at 0.8 inches. We'll get all zeros and back 0.8 inches. So we have our Y axis, X axis, and then the Z. So let's go ahead. We're gonna move our Y front and back. It will not move because it says reset. So I have to hit reset. If my emergency stop button was down, it'd make that audible sound. Reset, goes to ready, 
now we can make some movements. So, Y axis front back. This is the X and the Z, but X is left and right. That's just these guys there. We have the Z up and down. Kind of close. Okay, and then when that says continuous, we can hit this and go to mode into steps. And we'll look at the Z. I'm oh, sorry, my Z, which basically you can hear the beeps, and you have to actually look at that connection there to see it move because it's a very small movement there. That is the step function. So to move that step to MPG, we hit mode again, goes into MPG, and that will allow me to use my manual pulse generator. So let's see if we can get this X back to zero. Start in the middle speed, and in order to move it, I have to hit this button and then move the wheel. So, I'll move it back to zero. It's very small, I cannot even see the gantry really moving, anything on the gantry moving. So, I'll go to Y. Of course, I also have to set up the pulses for the distance to make sure an inch is actually an inch because when I first did it one inch was half of the table which is not what I was looking for so that led me to set up my soft limit switches immediately and the good news is is the emergency stop works well did use it stop something from running off the rails. So I'm gonna call that a, a win as well. All right, so we got everything kind of back to where the zero is gonna be. Now to load a file, what I have to do is take my thumb drive, top, and I'll plug it in. Make sure it's in there, give it a second. And then we're gonna hit page, which is basically kind of your menu system. It's gonna load or read all the files on the disk drive. These are all the files that I started with. This is the one that I found that works. And everything is zero, good to go. We would turn on our cooling. And then we would hit start. Now this is one of the first things, and it's not one of the first things, I believe this is the first thing that I have created on a CNC. Uh, father in law helped me create this. And this is also the file that we're running. Of course there's no spindle, but it's just gonna kind of follow the, the guideline there. And to just confirm if you're good enough to read coordinates, there they are. Since I'm not, I'm gonna hit toolpath. Give me a display of what we're running. Make sure that the cooling's on. That's awesome. This is some of the first movement we're seeing here. difference between being able to send a signal for the cooling through the offline controller and wiring a workaround button is the offline controller when you start it you would still have to manually start it and then the M9 would switch to M8 and that would start your cooling. If you forgot to start it you have to 
pause, start the cooling, and restart it. It's not a bad thing. Uh, but you would actually have to stop it versus this one. When you catch it, you see the lights off, you can just turn it on. You don't have to stop the program. Unfortunately, it also means that if it is started, you set it down the wrong way, you can also turn it off. That's why I also had it wired so the light is on when the cooling is running and it's flush. So technically, this would normally be off on most buttons, but I wired it to reverse so that you would actually have to have it compressed to be off. It's a little bit more noticeable when it's off. Everything looks more standard when it's on. And I'm not worried about forgetting to turn the pump off because with the system here, everything's on a file and I'm really just setting up the machine a couple minutes to get it going and a couple minutes to shut it down. So the pump can really just stay on all the time. I plan on leaving it just like that. That's just in case I need to do something, leave it on, do some maintenance or something like that, I can turn the pump on. Alright, that is the update. I'm going to CNC to look at what we're creating. This will be another thing I do again, another sign. We're going to do a little larger now that I have the capacity. Not quite there to making ships yet, but we're getting there. I say about halfway there. I'd say 75% will actually be being able to make some products, and the other 25% is going to be cosmetics. Doing what I do, making things a little intricate and/or difficult. Folks, have a good one. Back to work for me.